Okay, the most memorable derby for you? I've got to. For, for a purist, from my own personal point of view, was Westmead Hall, second derby winning, uh, was it 2006, yeah? So that was just before the Westmead Lord one, but I saw that on telly. And I think actually, you know, you know, do commentaries, but I think Errol's commentary was brilliant that night. Mm. Really, really good. Um, but from a personal point of view, I think what most memorable was actually the COVID one where I commentated on the Dear Jet Sydney one. Yes, of course. Uh, uh, and it was it was quite a, a stark, cold night, really. It was uh, sort of soulless in many respects, but probably memorable because of that. Yeah. From yeah. a personal point of view, yeah. Yeah, like the, the least Derby like final. Was it September? I'm trying to remember. What, what month? It was quite late, wasn't it? Yeah. I, yeah. I can't remember either. But yeah, it was quite late. It wasn't, it wasn't, and you know, and and the year before was Prices Blake at Nottingham, because that was when I, I had dogs at Nottingham as well. And I was sort of volunteered to do the commentaries for for Rachel there. And uh, and it turned out to be, yeah, it was just it was a very eerie night, but I actually had the pleasure. Well, the only one man that sat with me all night was Pat Buckley. Yeah, um, and I had a good chat with him because obviously everyone kept the distance because of COVID. And but he actually did. He did actually shake my hand last that that night. And um, and the jubilations that you saw with him and Emma, it was that. And Lorraine always thinks of that father son bond. Uh, yes, father daughter bond. Sorry, between you know her and the dad as well, sort of thing when she was doing the dog. So it's quite special. Yeah, it was a special night. And the most memorable derby for you? Eden the kid. Yeah. I thought I thought if he'd I thought if he'd come out half decent at all that night, it's here for everybody to see. If he'd come out half decent, the ground he made up in the final that night was unbelievable. It took my breath away. It looked listen, it was phenomenal. And to get into position after where it was was absolutely breathtaking for me. Yes, without a shadow of doubt, eating the kid. This one might be my pocket talking, but Droop is Roddick. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just wondering which final was he in? As uh, JT, wasn't it? Oh, that's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got, got, got absolutely massacred within the first few strides and yes. uh, rocked it home to finish second. But, um, yeah, we, we don't talk about that one too much. No, I think it was always one of those dogs, wasn't he, that, that if he got a clear run, was always was always going to be a fast dog. I think it's why he ran Dundalk so well, didn't he? Big track like Dundalk. Yeah. The first year at uh, Toaster, I thought that there was just a special atmosphere there. I think there was about five 6,000 there. Um, obviously, I've been all, all, the, all to all the Wimbledon ones. Uh which obviously Wimbledon, I love the track, but in terms of the facilities, it wasn't the greatest as it run down. And then bring it to Toaster, which was a breath of fresh air to honest here. Uh, and the atmosphere that day, and I'd, I picked a few good winners. And it's memorable actually because I don't know how Ty was shaped in and to be perfectly honest with you. I was buzzing for a street missile and connections. But yeah, I, I remember it just for being an unbelievable day. I woke up the next day thinking, unbelievable day. What a day that was. But I don't know how Ty was shaped hasn't won. So. That that would be on my most memorable one for the day, and just for the for the winner, really, it was a really special occasion for the special moment and very emotional. Uh, your most memorable derby, uh, most memorable, not in particularly the for any particular performance by a dog or anything like that, but in 1992 we had a book at um, Mildenhall, and um, one of the other bookmakers was um, TNF Mark Trillwood, who later went on to uh, be a, a major player in the ring at the stove. Anyway, him and his partner, we, we put up a for a bit of an interest, an anti-post board. Me and the, the guy I was doing the uh, book with, which is a lifelong friend of mine, Michael Stanford. And um, we stuck up uh, the odds and we put up um, you know, whatever we thought roughly what the going rates were. Anyway, um, Mark and um, Lawrence, his partner was at the time, they, they've come in and they said, oh, do you want to lay ring a hustle? Um, 33 to 1. So uh, we said, yeah, yeah, we'll lay it, we'll lay it. We weren't big layers at the time. We were just feeling our way into it. And he said, um, 10,000 to 300. So not wanting to lose face, <laughs> I looked at my, <laughs> I said, yes, you got that. <laughs> um, anyway, so we thought, oh, we'll be able to bear out of this or whatever. But unfortunately for us, it, 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 I think it won the first round, won the, won the next round. I think it was into about tens, and now we're thinking, well, do we have a thousand pound at tens just to get away doing seven hundred? Anyway, we were running an R in, 
anyway, actually went out in, in the next round and, um, and, and so we got away with it. Um, but as you probably know, 1993, Ringer Hustle won the derby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we were very, very, very lucky. So that's why this, that's the most memorable for me because we were kind of, well, not very comfortable for a while having laid that bet. So <laughs> there's only, I think we might have laid 30 quid against it or something stupid, you know? So. Yeah. 